Dr. Kaplan, welcome to the Pet Buzz today. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Fleck uh, and Charlotte. Nice to be here. So what are hookworms and how do dogs become infected with them? So hookworms are, are common roundworms uh, of dogs and they live in the intestine uh, and they actually, they, they suck on blood. They, they attach to the, the wall of the intestine and they will feed on blood. Um, and that's, that's how they cause their damage. And, and dogs become infected um, uh, by either ingesting or by having the, the parasite larvae penetrate their skin. So either way, um, so hookworms are pretty creative. So they can, come, they can come either through the skin or be ingested. So maybe paws too? Absolutely, yes. That's a common place where they'll, where they'll come through the dog skin. What symptoms do dogs demonstrate that are affected with hookworms? Well, interestingly enough, most dogs won't have any symptoms at all. Because uh, usually they only have a small number of worms, and the worms are, are they're, they're little worms. So if there's only a few worms in the dog, they don't really cause much damage. The problem is when you when dogs start getting more than a few worms, uh, and then they can start having symptoms. Uh, the most common one being diarrhea, uh, and often that diarrhea then will be will have uh, blood, uh, a little blood or mucus in in it. Um, so that's kind of the, that's, that's when you, when you see that, that's when you first usually know that maybe there's something going on here. Uh, dogs also can have a hard time keeping weight on or losing weight uh, when they're infected with hookworms. But th those are going to be the main symptoms that, that owners will notice. How do vet veterinarians uh, get rid of them? How do they kill the hookworms? Old fashioned hookworms were, were quite easy to kill. Um, pretty much all of the dewormer drugs uh, that veterinarians use uh, uh, routinely for treating worms in general uh, are, are highly effective against hookworms. And that includes all of the heartworm preventive products that people uh, give their dogs. All of those products pretty much also uh, kill hookworms. So, so hookworms are actually quite easy to kill um, when they're not resistant to the drugs. But your research lately reveals it's not so easy to kill them. So talk to us about your research. Yeah, so exactly. So um, I was getting some phone calls a few years ago from veterinarians that were having a hard time with some cases of hookworms. And it seems like no matter what they did, they couldn't clear the infections. Um, and hookworms have a kind of peculiar biology, which we probably don't have time to get into, but, um, uh, but dogs can become, uh, once dogs are infected, they can continue to leak out hookworms. Uh, and that's what most veterinarians thought that, that was going on. But I came from a different perspective and it, it sounded to me like these worms were drug resistant. Um, so I got samples uh, from several of these veterinarians from several of their patients. Uh, and I took those hookworm samples and I used them to infect a few laboratory dogs so I could actually then study the worms in much more detail. And then as we studied the worms, we concluded conclusively that these worms were indeed resistant to multiple dewormers. So now I know your research uh, involves some greyhounds, is that correct? And that you are also a greyhound or you were a greyhound owner, correct? That is correct, yes. W why greyhounds and w why greyhounds at the track? Drug resistance in worms tends to be a, kind of a numbers game where you have to have a lot of worms that are being treated with drug uh, because these mutations that cause resistance are, are very rare. So they're not going, so just by chance, they're not going to occur unless there's an awful lot of worms present. Um, and so greyhounds are raised on farms. So there's a lot of dogs. Um, they, they, they have exercise runs that are made of sand and sand is an ideal environment for the hookworms, uh, hookworm larvae to, to live and then to also then infect dogs. Um, and so it's been known historically that greyhounds had a, had a, had a pretty big problem with hookworms. Uh, and so greyhound tracks treated these dogs every month and they've been doing that, they did that for decades. Um, and almost certainly that's what caused the drug resistant worms to kind of emerge. Uh, and they appear to have now spread from the greyhounds into the pet dog population as well. Why do we need to be alarmed about hookworm mutation? I guess from your research. The mutations are, are important because they're occurring um, in parts of the worm that make it susceptible or, or make it now resistant to the drug. So, so the mechanism that the drug uses to kill the worms um, no longer works because the worms now have a mutation that changes how the drug is working. Um, and so, so, so the drugs then can't kill the worms anymore. Um, so that's, that's really where the mutations come into play uh, in this particular case. Uh, there's, not, there's, there's no like 
um, evil demon type thing. It's just, it's just biology and that the mutation happens to be occurring at the site where the drug is, is normally going to work to kill the worm. But what I found really interesting about the research was that the next generation, the eggs, the next generation of hookworms, don't they also um, continue to resist the drugs as well? Oh yeah, it's absolutely. It's a, it's a, it would be, it's a genetic trait. So um, these worms reproduce sexually, just, just like uh, mammals, humans do. And so when the worm has, when the, when the, when the, when the um, parent worm has the mutation, they're going to pass it on to their offspring. So all of the eggs from resistant, when two resistant worms mate, all the eggs are also going to have that same mutation. Um, so then it's going to be passed on. Um, and then one of the problems with the drug resistant worms is that the normal drugs won't work. And, and even if there's a mixed infection, because a lot of worms out there, a lot of hookworms out there still are not resistant. Uh, there's a lot of drug, you know, the old fashioned susceptible worms out there. But if a dog is going to be exposed to hookworms in general, and some of them are resistant to drugs and some of them aren't, then you treat the dog, you're only going to kill the drug susceptible ones, the ones that are resistant will be left behind. Um, and then the dog will be chronically infected without the owner or the veterinarian knowing it unless they're doing uh, uh, more testing. What should pet owners do to reduce the risk of dogs becoming infected with the hookworm? There's no way of knowing if the hookworm is going to be drug resistant or, or the old fashioned drug susceptible type. Um, basically, the best thing that owners can do uh, is be very conscious of fecal hygiene and, and picking up feces. The, the worm eggs that are shed in the feces of dogs are not infective to other dogs. Um, it takes, the, the eggs have to go through a development process that takes around five days um, before the parasite reaches the infective stage. So if feces are, are cleaned up um, immediately, preferably, but even in the first you know, couple of days after, uh, then those, those uh, larvae can't get out of the feces and, and infect any other dog. So that's probably the single most important thing. But of course, you can't account for other people not picking up for their dogs. And once, once these parasite larvae leave the feces, they get into the soil, uh, then they could be there and you can't see them. Um, so it's going to be important for dog owners to, to have their dogs on a, on a, uh, on a routine um, deworming treatment. So if they're on heartworm prevention, that, that is good. That's going to also cover hookworms, but only the old fashioned type that are drug susceptible. So that's where testing more often is going to come into play. In the past, veterinarians recommended once a year fecals, and that was probably adequate. Um, but with these drug resistant hookworms, um, I don't believe that is so anymore. So uh, I'm recommending that, that uh, the fecals actually be checked probably every three to four months because if your dog winds up having some of these drug resistant hookworms, the sooner you find out about it, the sooner you can take care of it uh, and then prevent the, that dog from actually getting higher and higher levels of infection and also prevent spreading it to other dogs. One thing you need to be aware of is that if a dog picked up hookworms, the old fashioned kind, and you were just on a monthly treatment for your heartworm, that would kill it and it would be done. Um, but now with these drug resistant worms, the worms will survive that treatment, which will allow then if you're not picking up the feces of that dog, um, you know, very vigilantly, then the environment can become infected with those drug resistant hookworms, which then can reinfect your dog over and over again. And those infections then can build up to high levels that'll make the dog sick. All of us veterinarians, when we talk about heartworm preventative, we say, well, now this heartworm preventative, not only will it take care of preventing the heartworm, but it will also help prevent hookworms, roundworms, and whipworms. And what we're saying is that, yes, it really is helpful, but we can't trust it totally anymore. Correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. And there's even drug-resistant heartworms uh, uh, in some parts of the country. So far, it hasn't appeared to be much of a problem in Florida yet, but it always could spread there. It's mostly more focused in Mississippi, um, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, and that area of the country by the Mississippi. Um, wow. Oh, the challenges of practicing medicine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have another question because we are almost out of time. But, you know, I think pet owners, you know, obviously need to be concerned about the spread of infection. But what about especially to them? Hookworms can infect people, but in a different way than dogs. So in dogs, the hookworms actually, once they're ingested or they um, or if they might, if they penetrate through the skin, they'll actually you know, migrate, uh, eventually getting to the intestine. When, when hookworms infect people, 
they penetrate through the skin, um, but they, they get lost because they're not in the right animal. And so they don't have the right uh, biochemical cues. Um, and so what they do then is just they just migrate under the skin and they cause an eruption uh, that's very, very itchy, similar to poison ivy. Um, it's not a serious condition. It's very un unpleasant, um, but it's not serious. And in the past, it was easily treated. The, the issue now is that if, um, if people were to get infected now with the drug-resistant hookworms, that the medications that, that physicians typically use aren't going to be working very well. So, it's, um, so there is a bit more of a risk there. The good, I guess the good news is, is that it's probably the hookworms from cats are probably more commonly associated with it because cats are, you know, burying their feces in the sand and things like that. Um, so, but we really don't have data on, on you know, on, on how many cases are due to dogs versus cats. So it certainly is a concern, although I, it's probably not going to be a huge problem, but when someone actually gets it, it, uh, it, it will be uh, problematic. For hygiene purposes and people that live down in the islands like where you are, or in Florida, where we are, probably walking out in the backyard with bare feet isn't in their best interest. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And then, and again, it gets back to the fecal hygiene. Um, you know, one of the reasons why why uh, it's why we why we have laws for for picking up feces. It's not only because for for high for general hygiene and, and appearance. It's also because um, there's a disease risk um, to, to to other dogs. I got to go home and clean my yard. Absolutely. We got to wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Kaplan, Dr. Kaplan, thank you so much for joining us and discussing. Really, this is a very important topic for all pets all over the United States, but particularly in the South. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, Dr. Fleck and Charlotte, it's been a pleasure being here with you. And thank you very much for having me. Thanks for viewing our content on Pet Buzz Plus.